Vermont Community Commons. We're back for another episode with Norman James, a veteran news reporter for WDV and then Channel 3, back with VV, then with Governor Tom Salmon for a couple of years, all four, <laughs> and then a public citizen. When you were the Tom Salmon, you had been a news yeah. reporter. I'm jumping all over the place. Yeah, but you, there's a long stretch of time in that. But it's evolution. Right. Great historical memories of yeah, Vermont well, history. Yeah, well, yours, 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 yours is a damn good memory. <laughs> and um, so you, when you... You're a news reporter for 13 years, 59 to 72 with WDV and Channel 3, WCX. But then Governor Tom Salmon, you were with him from 72 to 76 for four years. You're no longer a news reporter. You are a newsmaker. And that's yes. a different reality. Well, it is. Um, it is. Uh, but being a former news person gives you a great insight as to what to expect for questions. That's where that that's where that plays in, you know. I used to have a game. I used to play with Rod Clark, who at that time was uh, the UPI. Press, UPI yeah. press bureau for UPI. <laughs> it's and, fun to play games with Rod Clark. Oh, <laughs> but we played these games at Charlie O's or before? Uh, no, no, this is at the Thrush. <laughs> at the Thrush. At the Thrush. Yeah. So we was walking distance. We, you're right. <laughs> so we we. You, uh, <laughs> We this, is, this is really for my adventure stuff. So. Rod Clark, director of UPI, yeah. is playing a a question answer game but, with the governor's stop assistant at the thrush. Correct. <laughs> this is, right. This is what familiar for me. But the game is this. Right. Okay, let's hear this. The, the game is this. Okay. I needed to anticipate every question right. that he was going to ask at a press conference. Sure. And I was doing pretty well. Yeah. Because his questions were based on the issues, right? And Whatever so, you gave him. And so when I, when I brief the governor before the press conference, I say, well, you can expect questions about blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it happened. Right? One press conference, uh -huh. right? We're in the governor's ceremonial offices at the State House. Uh -huh. And uh, the governor's seated, and Rod Clark is over here sitting on this side of the table. And the thing is going along, and I'm smiling smugly. I anticipate all the questions, and Rod Clark says, Governor, um, wh what is your reaction to the events in Nicaragua? <laughs> the governor looks over at me like this. Rod Clark looks over at me like that. And I'm looking at myself, where did that come this from? This is out of the blue, man. <laughs> well, there was an event happening in, in Nicaragua uh, at the time, but all of a sudden he... Daniel Ortega or something? He, oh, yeah, but he nailed me. <laughs> Those were the days. But, but, but we're working in the governor's office in that capacity. Yeah, you knew what the questions were going to be. Mm -hmm. And so your obligation was to, uh, and if you were asked questions, is be honest, be truthful. And just be, uh, I can remember talking to several reporters. Uh, one, the late, great John Irving, who was the news director for WDEV. He uh, replaced you. After I left, right, right. right. And he was irreplaceable. Uh, good news person. Good news person. He, he gave me a call one day, and he was beating. He didn't know the quite question to ask, and I knew what he wanted to ask. Right. right? So he's going on, and we're conversing for a And I said, John, why don't you ask me? Boom, 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 boom. It was all out there. So he said, Norm, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and I gave him the answer. <laughs> it, it doesn't happen in the other state of Vermont. But great. but you see, I knew what he wanted. Right. Right? He helped him out. And, I, and it wasn't that I wanted him to work hard for it. Uh. But I want him to get what he wanted in the context in which it should be given. Well, your brothers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> there was. I'm glad you're enjoying this. It that. doesn't happen in Sacramento. I can it, tell you that. You no, know, it doesn't happen. Or Albany. It doesn't happen in Lansing either. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it happens here. It happens here. Well, it's hey, 620,000 people in this state, mm -hmm. right? Everybody knows everybody, or who knows somebody. So when somebody says, "I know a guy," you can bet on it. Correct. Yeah. And only about 500 people are in politics and news. Oh, about. well, but at, the, at state level, but you remember, there's politicians in each of the 246 towns and cities in this state. Sure. Yeah, there are. There are. So, uh, and again, it's, the, it's having the experience of being, of covering news to be able to anticipate some of the questions that were going to be asked. Mm -hmm. And, quite frankly, to protect the governor and some of the things that were not correct, and you set the reporter straight. Mm-hmm. And sometimes reporters don't like to be set straight because they'll turn around and say, well, so-and-so said. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they said. Yeah. So when you, were, when you were the assistant to the governor, yeah. um, who was the major 
favorite Channel 3 people of the time? Is that Tim Lois? Yes. Yes. Right. Right. It was Tim, who was also, by the way, an, an alumnus of WDEV. As, as, as well as Anson Tabbitt. As Anson Tabbitt, <laughs> right. You created the tradition for oh, these I guys. don't know about that, but yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, they were in but, elementary school when you started. Well, Anson is now the commissioner of agriculture. He goes back and forth at Channel 3 in agriculture. Right. Well, he takes his microphone and camera with him back and <laughs> forth, I think. <laughs> and uh, 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 Tim Lewis is, up Tim, in, Tim Lewis is a in, professor of journalism. Up in Linden. Right. Well, I was teaching. I've been connected with the Vermont Mountaineers baseball organization uh -huh. here. And I always go to Tim Lewis to get our play by play broadcaster. And he's given us two. Oh, the wonderful. very first one he gave us in 2003, uh -huh. um, uh, Tim Haggerty. Tim Haggerty was our play-by-play -play on the radio, play-by-play -play announcer. And uh, he is now the, the number one announcer for um, the uh, El Paso Chihuahuas, which is the AAA <laughs> ball club for the San Diego Padres. Don Orsillo, who was a play-by-play -play guy for the Boston Red Sox, went to San Diego. If he hadn't gone to San Diego, Tim Haggerty would have that top job. That's great. I see how that all works out. So, and this year, in the coming year, 2018, this season, again, uh, Tim Lewis reached into his uh, livestock barrel up there and pulled out a young guy who's going to be coming to us who's very, very good. Uh -huh. And so we're all set for another season. That's great. It's There's another story. It's the WDV Channel 3 connection, oh, all alumni. Exactly. And that's what it all is. We have a momentary technical question here. We'll be right back. Can you hear me? Yes. You didn't, I, you, the time clock, when we started. Oh, sorry. So you, maybe tell me where, where we are. All right. All right, and then you could edit the break. So I need to know how much time we have left. <laughs> I wonder why you were looking over there all the time. Oh uh, my God, we're in. We're in. And every stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Tell me when you're ready. Hold, hold on a sec. Um, okay. Tell me, give me like five seconds, go. Five, four, three, two. So Montpelier Martineers get their play-by-play -play people through Norman James and Tim Lewis. Well, through Tim Lewis anyway, <laughs> yeah. But it's your, it's good. But your but, alumni but, from... But, but that's a connection. You know, and by the way, all of them, former news people. All of them, former news people. And, and that's a skill set that I think that anybody who is in public service ought to have. Uh, Absolutely. You, 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 you can you ask a question, and when you're looking for the answer, you're not looking at it verbally. You're looking at body language. Yes. There is such a thing as body language. Absolutely. You're looking at tone. Uh, you're looking where the eye is. You're looking at mm -hmm. whatever the, the demeanor is. Mm -hmm. And you put that all in and it, uh, through a filter, and it comes out, this is the answer, right? Whether it's terse or whether it's calm. Those kinds of adjectives come from that kind of an answer. You can discern it. So, I would. S Steve Patterson was with the Vermont Press Bureau. Yes, then. he was. Howard right. Coffin. Good friend. Good friend. Howard, Howard Coffin. Coffin. Always went to a press conference without a pad and pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they called him Casket. Remember that? Yeah. And um, so, who was the Associated Press then? Oh, boy, I'm trying to think. It was before Chris Graff, right? Uh, yeah, uh, before Chris Graff, Bill Moran. Uh, right. Bill Moran was there with the AP, and then. And there was a the guy that stepped in, John somebody or other, and I think he went on to Maine. No, uh, 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 Mike Sinclair was at, with Channel 3, then right. he went to AP. Right. Uh, and then I think it was Chris Graff that followed yes. uh, Mike Sinclair. After he wrapped up at Middlebury yeah. and some other things. Yeah, right. Oh, well, Chris Graff, you know, he's a great reporter. Yes. And his son, Garrett, has written a couple of books. Even on the so, FBI director, who's the yeah. special prosecutor. Yeah, that's... This is great stuff. It is great stuff. I, people ought to take advantage of it. Don't sit, don't sit there and listen to me. Go get the book. Google. Vermont born. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> before we conclude with Thomas Salmon, uh, when he first ran for governor in 72 in November. He ran for, uh, for uh, attorney general, too. He did in 1970. Right. And Jeffords this, beat this, him. The slogan was, let's gather around Tom Salmon. I remember this. Yeah. And, um, and then in 1970, he ran for governor. Yep. And um, Jim Jeffords and Fred Hackett had a primary. Hackett won. 
Jeffers came back two years later, became a congressman Correct. in 74. And, um, and, and Hackett was one of the few Republicans in Republican states that lost. Simon had a huge victory. But just so we have a little sample, there was a Liberty Union candidate in 1972 who ran for a special <laughs> election in January. Prouty had died in November of 71. Yep. There was a special election in January of 72 mm, right. for U.S. Senate. Yeah. And it was Bob Stafford, the Republican. It was Randy Major, Westminster, the Democrat, and Bernie Sanders, a 28-year-old or 29-year-old from right. Liberty Union. He got 2% of the vote. Right. And then he enjoyed his time running for office. Right. He went to this meeting he knew nothing about. It came back to the U.S. Senate candidate. <clears throat> Ironically, it happens to be the very seat he holds today. Well, I didn't know that, it's really. It's the same one. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and then in November of 72, he ran for governor. Went from 2% of the vote to 1% of the vote. Bernie Sanders, you remember him in the beginning a little. Oh, I do. I do. I remember interviewing him. And his message is the same today as it was back then. You know, it, it, but that's the credibility factor uh, uh, about our United States senator now. It always has been. Mm -hmm. And when he toppled uh, uh, Gordy Plaquette uh, in the mayoral race in Burlington, 81 in March, by 12 votes, 10, uh, 10 votes. It was 14 okay. votes. It was by the recount. It was went down to 10. 10. Uh, and uh, that that was just so shocking, but not to an awful lot of people around the state. Uh, they said, "Okay, the time is coming, and we've got to be prepared for this." And what Bernie has done, I think, and people may d be. A complete disavow his ideology, his thoughts, his comments about what socialism is all about. The fact of the matter is, despite being a candidate, has waken, uh, been the wake-up call. For people must become involved if they want to create a better society for themselves and for their neighbors. And I hope people will say, mainly for their neighbors. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that's how I look at Bernie Sanders. In, in 72, you ran for governor. In yeah. 74, he ran for Senate again against Leahy and, and uh, Dick Mallory. Right. And then in 76, he ran for governor again. Right. And it was um, Dick Snelling and um, Stella Hackle. Oh, that was that primary that Stella Hackle beat, beat, uh, Brian, beat Burns Brian Burns. Burns. John that, was, that was divisive. Very. But I remember the Bernie Sanders speech of 72, right. which is many, was a, that's like 45 years ago or, right. or 46. Or you more. were young then. I was pretty young. It's the same speech he gave today. It's the same speech he'll give tomorrow. It yeah. is the same speech. Right. It's the same Bernie. Amazing. Right. I don't know of any other politician in Vermont or across the country who for 50 years has been very clear on the same speech. It's the same speech that he took across country in his presidential campaign. It is. Before he got waylaid by the DNC. Mm -hmm. Amazing part of Vermont history. Absolutely. We heard it way back when. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing blurred for Bernie. There was another little guy, a uh, political gadfly at that time, too. Uh, Bill Meyer? Uh, no, no, no. Peter Diamondstone. Oh, right. <laughs> Peter didn't do quite as well as Bernie. Well, he didn't, but he was persistent. <laughs> he was. He was very persistent. Entertaining. And he was that. As was John Franco. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't know too much about John Franco. But yeah. 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 Okay, where are we going now? So, anyway, so. so any more about the Sam administration that you want to speak of? It was, four years? Uh, it was, you know, those were the years when uh, John Boylan was the uh, senator from uh, Essex Orleans up there. Uh -huh. Chairman uh, of the, the Senate Appropriations Committee. Uh -huh. And he had a very sharp scalpel. Right. But we were faced, we were faced with really tough economic times. The mm -hmm. revenues were down and the expenses were going up mm -hmm. and we had to cut the budget. Uh, and that's what we lived through uh, in the first two years. We kind of leveled out after that, but the first two years, we just, uh, and I can remember Bob Wilson, who was the commissioner of administration, now would be known as chief of staff, right, right hand man to the governor. He would come into the governor's office and he'd say, oh, it's e it was either, either P Peter Giuliani, who was the chair of the Ways and Means in the House, mm -hmm. who wanted to raise taxes, right. Or John Boylan, who wanted to cut the budget. I mean, <laughs> which way do you go on this? <laughs> Very familiar. Yeah. So, by the way, we dealt with that. Uh -huh. We dealt with that. And we, got, and we got by it. Yeah. And it was, uh, personally, it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, what other human being can say that I stood at the right hand of the governor? I'll tell you something else. For here. four years. For four years. I'll tell you something else that happened just recently. 
uh, I was doing some part-time stuff just a couple of week, days ago uh, with Associated General Contractors of Vermont. I was with them for five years before I retired this past October. And one of the programs I did was called Project Road Safe, and it is uh, to uh, provide classroom teaching for young drivers, mm -hmm. anybody between the age of 15 and 25. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, well, there was a, a, a system to set it all up, but my point is this. Just recently, Associated General Contractors had what they called their Construction Career Day. And that's when, and that's at their campus, which is just uh, west of Montpelier on Three Mile Bridge Road. Uh, they brought in, the, the association brought in uh, students from uh, technical career schools around the state. And we had about 420 kids on this campus. And we had heavy equipment. We had all kinds of construction activity that goes on during construction process. And groups of kids were going from station to station to take a look at it all. One of the stations was a golf cart uh, demonstration and it was uh, stop texting. In other mm -hmm. words, it was to prove that you can't drive and text because you knock over a cone. Mm -hmm. Well, they gave me a call and asked me if I'd come and do that. Absolutely, no question. So that went on in the morning, all morning long, and I used to take the kids out, give them a talk, take them on the, on the route and so forth, and they have a general conversation. Fast forward to lunchtime. The governor, Phil Scott, is there and he's talking with kids and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that one of the kids walks up to the governor, and it's the same kid that I, I asked this kid, I said, when, during my time with him, I said, so what frustrates you about driving? And he said, people that won't pull over for emergency vehicles. He's a senior um, up in the Northeast Kingdom, mm -hmm. and um, he's on the e uh, volunteer uh, emergency squad and to get to where he's got to go. And he's got a light, he's all, his car's all tricked up, and um, he's got a light and so forth, but people just pull, don't pull out of his way. Mm. So he's really frustrated about that. Um, but I saw him approach the governor. And so, uh, and then, uh, so I walked over, and he had his arms folded, and he said, Governor, I want to talk to you about guns. And the governor said, sure. And all of a sudden, a crowd of young boys were on, and they had, a, they had a great conversation back and forth. Some of the facts that the youngster had were not accurate. Mm -hmm. And the governor didn't say they were not accurate, but he talked around them just to, in so many words to say that that's really not accurate, but right. so forth. But they got done with all of that. And uh, so I, w I walked up to him later. I said, how did you like that? And he said, it was good. And I said, do you know of anybody else that could walk up to any other governor in any other state and do what you just did? Well, he'd never thought about it, mm -hmm. obviously. But I wanted him to have the seed in his mind that that doesn't happen. That's right. You know, there's a phalanx of safe security guys around every governor. Mm -hmm. In here, Vermont, we got one guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, our governor's always been, regardless of political stripe, accessible to the electorate. Mm -hmm. And that's something that this state really ought to be uh, uh, very, very proud of. And spends time with average voters. Absolutely. People. Yeah. Even 10, 20, 30 minutes. Abs oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, pure, and he pure. was stopping to have his picture taken. Kids, can have a picture taken? Sure, fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like an athlete doesn't have time. Forget it. Mm -hmm. oh, this is a different thing. Pure athlete gets Vermont. paid millions, right? Pure Vermont. And you, you worked with highway safety and young people through various yeah. career changes. Yeah. Uh, I've mentioned I went to the Barry Granite Association as their executive after uh, a short session at International Coins and Currency, and this was after the governor's office. So went from the governor's office in 77 to ICC and, uh, uh, excuse me, I went to the state energy office mm -hmm. for two years, right, and to 79. And then 1980, I went to International Coins and Currency. Uh, 1981, um, I was hired as the executive vice president of the Barry Granite Association. And I stayed there uh, as first as editor of uh, Barry Life magazine, mm -hmm. great, great magazine. Mm -hmm. And then as their executive vice president until I think it was 1989 or something like that. And Chris Barbieri hired me at the Vermont Chamber of Commerce to be his uh, vice president of programs to manage the big business and in industry expo that they've been sponsoring for the last number of years uh, over in Burlington. Uh, it was during the last five years of that that I uh, applied for a grant from Governor's Highway Safety Program 
for this program called Project Road Safe to, um, to provide classroom training for young drivers, figuring that our members at that time, the Vermont Chamber of Commerce, has many, had many members who have young employees who are on the road. And if we could provide that service, yes, they've had driver training and they've done that, but this goes a little bit beyond that, more nuances of what life is on the road and how do you deal with um, people who don't pull over for, for emergency vehicles. Uh, and that program was, was well done. And well, when I retired in, uh, from the chamber in 2005, wrapped up the program, took it back to Governor's Highway Safety and they put it on the shelf. <laughs> My retirement lasted for six months. I was getting itchy and I gave them a call, I asked them if they still had the program, yep. Gave a call to Pat McDonald, who at that time was the commissioner of labor. Of, of labor. <clears throat> Uh, did my elevator speech for her, uh, and she said, let's bring it on. And so I was there for five years with this, just with this program. And they were great sponsors for it. Uh, and again, operating on the federal grant uh, from uh, Agency of Transportation, not this agency, but, well, now it is, yeah, for all intents and purposes. And then I moved over to Associated of General Contractors, with gay, again, with the same premise that there are young drivers out there that are employed, and some by, are by the AGC members. And so as a part of the overall workplace safety curriculum, mm -hmm. AGC put this into the, into the mix. So that's where all that came. So I have been a very, very big advocate of, of helping youngsters understand what the literally the mechanics are of driving a car rather than slamming that sucker into D and trying to get to zero to 60 in four seconds. Mm -hmm. You, you know, Which all the boys do. Well, they do, it. but they, but, you know, but they don't understand. Some of the data shows, yes, okay, so we have X number of people killed on the highway. But what was really never publicized, and it is available, are the thousands of people who are uh, injured, incapacitatedly. Mm -hmm. Which means that they're the breadwinner, there's no bread. Right. Well, there's no taxes, there's no mortgage payment, there's all this, right? Mm -hmm. There's whatever that means if you're incapacitated. Yeah, in a life. And if you've got a, you know, a family of four kids, hey, uh, some, it's, a, it's a real issue, real issue. So what uh, the intent of the program is also to explain to them that a person is not fully developed until they're about the age of 23 or 24. Mm -hmm. And the last part of the body to become fully developed is the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's the thinking part right here. Mm -hmm. I know I've gone from politics to brain, mm -hmm. but, but it's been my road, and this is where I am today. Mm -hmm. And tell us, Norman, that um, <coughs> when you left the governor's, when you're talking about family of four, right. Steve, you left the governor's office in January of <laughs> 77. Right, looking for a job. And then you're a public citizen. Yeah. Um, you had been the governor's office for four years, a news reporter for 13. Right. You have four children, yeah, and I imagine there's a grocery bill and a Green Mountain Power bill and a phone bill, or right? Oh, all of the above. Property taxes, and so yeah. What was that transition like? It coming was, coming back into yeah. regular life. Well, obviously, you know, um, you look for a job. I mean, I I remember being interviewed by a reporter right at the end of the of the Salmon uh, administration. So, what are you going to do? Everybody <coughs> going to do? I said. I understand that the unemployment office is open on Monday morning. <laughs> and I went to the Barry Unemployment Office. Uh -huh. I drew unemployment, checked around for jobs and so forth. And uh, I, I even went and had an interview for a job driving the Wise potato chip truck on a route that covered White River Junction and back. Uh, and the guy that was interviewing me said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm looking for a job. And he says, your background? You're overskilled. Sorry, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. Wow, wait a minute. I want to work. So anyway, that was part of all of that. And then um, when I left the Barry Granite Association, um, I had 52 interviews before I found a job. Finishing second does something with you. You know what? About halfway through all of this, about three quarters of the way all the way through, I found it to be very pleasing to interview the person who's interviewing me. Mm -hmm. The question was, well, okay, I'm applying for a job with you, but you tell me why I should work for you. 
Right. Tell me about your company. Like being a newsman. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's yeah. that skill set. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. So. So what's the so by coming in second in the interviews and coming in first. Yeah. yeah. What's the slight evidence side track? To, to be at the right place at the right time <laughs> to have the skill set that is needed. With the right person hiring. With a, well, yeah, that helps. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's true too. You need inside track. Yeah. Yeah. It does. But, uh, but if anybody's looking for a job, persevere. Persevere. There are, and I can't say enough about education. Um, and I can't say enough about technical career education. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, many of the guidance counselors, and that's the wrong title, I'm sure, but advisors, we'll put them this way, of kids that are coming, uh, going into high school, coming out of high school, are just targeting college. And there are many students that are not prepared for college, but they are prepared for a technical education, which it applies math, which, uh, uh, to which uh, uh, languages are applied, uh, science is applied to uh, use construction or electrical construction, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I would strongly encourage more support for the technical career centers in this state. Once upon a time, it was called shop. Right, metal and wood. Metal and wood. You went to shop. Mm. You know what that was? Did you have that in Spalding when you were in high school? I, it was there. I didn't do that. Uh -huh. But it was there. Yeah. It was there. And, and they went up to the auditorium in Barrie. Uh, it wasn't the auditorium. It was a building that's no, well, there. It was next to it. It was where shop was. Right. Anyway. Right. And they'd walk back and forth. Dead of winter. Walking back and forth. Uh, but but, but that, that whole trade has been for too long treated as the bastard child of education. Mm -hmm. It is the elite part of education is going to college and getting a sheepskin. I don't think so. It's an achievement. Mm -hmm. It's an achievement. But so isn't a plumber's license. Yes. And so isn't a master carpenter who can right. build you a house for you, keep you warm. An electrician's winter. master. That's an achievement. Certificate. All right. So that, those certificates are and achievements. And they can produce paychecks. They can. And communities and, and families. And, uh, but anyway, that's where I am with that. Mm. Uh, it, I had a long, checkered career, but one thing I've taken out of it is that I've never, I never wanted to lose the opportunity to learn something. And so wherever anybody goes, if you just take time to, to listen, that's the new thing now. You know, uh, that's a, a three letter, uh, a six letter word. That that sh should be in everybody's vocabulary and should be practiced all the time. But that should have been done way before WW1. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go there about the political things that I feel that I have. On a future show, perhaps. On a future show. A future I guarantee show. you that. But we enjoyed these memories, dreams, and reflections of Vermont politics, history, and events that you had a front row seat. I did, and I've enjoyed it very much, and thank you very much for this opportunity, Ken. You've done great things in your life. I think the next show ought to be me interviewing you. Okay, deal. So that's enough for today. Uh, there'll be future episodes. Thank you for this um, part of Vermont Community Commons with Norman James, a veteran, rare, extraordinary <laughs> Vermonter. See you next time.